Good afternoon. I'm Frances Sheehan, the president of the Foundation for Delaware County. I have the honor of welcoming you, you to the first of what we hope will be an annual public town hall on issues of importance in Delaware County. The Foundation for Delaware County is the principal underwriter of WHYY's reporting on news in Delaware County. Today, our moderator will be Sandra Clark, the vice president for news and civic dialogue at WHYY, our region's public television Vision and radio station. Each year we work with WHYY to showcase an important public challenge. Our goal? To educate and engage you on issues that we believe present significant opportunities to move our county forward. We've been planning this program since late last year as a way to present the results of the Johns Hopkins study and also to educate all of us about what it will take to set up our own county public health department. And then the COVID-19 pandemic hit. The work is even more urgent now. And so we're so grateful that you've all joined with us today. Leading the effort on the part of the county is Dr. Monica Taylor, a scientist, a professor, and soon to be the mother of a third daughter, as well as the vice chair of our county council. Dr. Taylor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Francis, and thank you to those on the panel and residents who are joining us virtually. Your input is greatly valued. Many of you participated in the public health study questionnaire and submitted your concerns and experiences. This helped us to determine the county's greatest needs and how to best support the public health of our community. The health and safety of our residents is council's top priority. Unlike our neighboring counties of Montgomery, Chester, and Philadelphia, Delaware County does not have a county health department. We have seen concerning trends in public health through the years. The COVID-19 pandemic served as yet another example of how critical our county health department is to a densely populated county like ours. Just days after the election last year, we began the legwork to establish a county health department. A few days after the November election, myself and our new council elects, Elaine Schaefer and Christine Ruther and incumbent council members, Brian Zydek and Kevin Mann created a dozen transition teams to gather information, identify key issues, and develop and recommend action plans regarding a wide range of issues and subjects relating to the governance and management of Delaware County. One of the transition groups was dedicated to public health. Beginning in December, as part of our transition process, council worked with experts to identify the steps that needed to take place to create a public health department in Delaware County. In March, we were faced with the COVID-19 pandemic the importance of a county health department was clear well before the COVID-19 pandemic and responding to COVID-19 provided valuable information about the public health needs of our residents. During the early stages of the COVID-19 outbreak in Delaware County, the county was dependent upon the state for information on cases in the county. Contact tracing and res for residents who tested positive and guidance. A few weeks after the first case in the county, Delaware County entered into an intergovernmental cooperation agreement with Chester County, which identified the responsibilities of the Chester County Health Department during the COVID-19 outbreak. Under the agreement, Chester County Health Department provides coordination of increased testing, uh, case investigation and surveillance, quarantine designations and public health guidance to Delaware County residents. This has been vital in the prevention and testing of COVID-19 in the residents. Last night, council took another step towards getting more information for our public health department. Council approved the request for proposals for an economic impact and feasibility study. This December, we anticipate having a strategic plan completed. And in the first few months of 2021, we will create a Delaware County Board of Health. In the spring of 2021, we plan to hire our director for the new Delaware County Health Department. And in the summer and fall of 2021, we will begin hiring personnel for the newly created health department. By the end of 2021, we hope, and our goal is to have a Delaware County Health Department that is operational. We have made enormous progress since we officially began this process. And that is a testament to the hard work of those inside and outside of government who have assisted us. In the coming months, we will continue to move forward with the timeline and plans to launch a Delaware County Health Department. We have a wonderful panel presenting to us today. First, we have Beth Resnick, Assistant Dean for Public Health Practice 
Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health will be presenting detailed information on the findings of the public health study. Rosemary Hall, health policy consultant for Delaware County will be giving an update on COVID-19 in the county. And Grace Gornflow, principal of Gornflow Consulting Incorporated, who is assisting with the, create, with the creation of the strategic plan for Delaware County's health department, will provide a more comprehensive update on the creation of the health department. Those watching will have an opportunity to submit questions after the presentation via the chat. And thank you again for those who are participating tonight. I'd now like to turn it over to Beth Resnick for our first presentation. Beth. Great, thank you so much, Dr. Taylor. And thank you to everyone um, for the opportunity to be here and share our, the results of our Johns Hopkins Public Health Study. I'm also here today with my um, team, Palani Mui and also Dr. Aruna Chandran. Um, and we are happy to take questions afterwards and also wanted to point out that in the handout is a um, executive summary of our report and the full report will also be available um, uh, to the public. So, um, and also I wanna thank many of you, I'm sure some of you are on the town hall that were involved in this study. We had um, lots of public input and great enthusiasm and support. So again, I want to, to thank all of those that have been involved and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So first we'll go back in time, which July, 2019, which now feels very long ago, um, was when we first uh, were funded by the Delaware County Council to do our study. You can see the specific um, objectives here, but basically the point was to find out what was currently going on in Delaware County, looking at the structure of the, um, the public health system that was available, as well as looking at data um, around the health status of the county, and as well as getting public input into um, people's opinions, concerns, and interests around public health in Delaware County. And then ultimately we were to be um, developing recommendations um, based on our findings. So clearly, as I said, July 9, 2019 feels like a long, long time ago. Um, and in 2020, obviously many things happened, um, particularly to Delaware County with your new county council. And as Dr. Taylor already described, some of the initiatives that went on um, basically right when they started um, in their new, um, new leadership here to think about a new um, a Delaware County Health Department. Um, and then of course we had the pandemic that started in um, March 2020. So a couple things, first of all, after the new council, we adapted our study in the sense of aligning what we were gonna be finding with the idea of uh, um, a local county health department. So you'll see when I get to the recommendations that we um, frame them around that idea. And then secondly, I wanted to just highlight that the um, information that we gathered and the data we looked at was all pre-COVID. Um, so I actually think what you what I'm going to share with you, I don't think will be surprising to anyone, but I think again, needing to think about now in the wake of COVID-19 that people are um, really understanding the importance of what we're talking about and why this is needed. So I guess my point is that the, the findings we have, I think are even amplified even further um, based on the um, pandemic and then the aftermath of people realizing the importance of a public health infrastructure. So what we did, just quickly, this is our um, diagram here, and we talked to people in the community. Again, thank you to those that were involved. We looked at the current structure and did an assessment of that. And then we also gathered data from a variety of sources to look at the health status and how Delaware County was doing um, in comparison to um, several other uh, seven different comparison counties, as well as the state of Pennsylvania and the US as a whole. Additionally, I was also the lead investigator on the 2010 public health study that was done by Johns Hopkins. So we also did a trend analysis of how things were um, from 2010 till this study in 2020. So basically the community input, and that included a survey that was sent out and responded to by over um, almost nearly 1800 Delaware County residents. Um, four focus groups and a um, convening, a Palava Hut um, convening meeting, um, and 24 uh, interviews um, with different representatives, cross sectors in the county. And what we heard in terms of, again, specifically around the role of a Delaware County Health Department was that there was a real need for vision and leadership, as well as accountability in public health. 
we heard a lot that there was different programs that were existing, but how do you know who the go-to is and where could there be one central source for information? There was a loud um, cry for need for data, both, both at the county level and also at the neighborhood level, um, in particular because there was concern about um, health disparities and different um, vulnerable populations in terms of health status really varying across the county. So again, having that data at a granular level that you could look and see by neighborhood was also um, noted as important. Again, there were some services that already exist that people felt were pretty good, but again, there wasn't an opportunity to sort of coordinate and leverage and a central place to find um, information. There was also the, the sense that um, other resources, federal and state resources could be available if you had a county health department in um, Delaware County to be able to advance health efforts here. So um, additionally, again, part of the community input, areas that were um, voiced as concern were access to care, um, mental health services, environmental health, meaning clean air, water, um, and, and the impacts of uh, environment on health. There was also a concern about obesity and healthy lifestyles, um, as well as social determinants of health, which we mean by that um, jobs, housing, education, so those social um, aspects that actually impact health of the Delaware County residents. So then we looked at data. Um, and again, we used different sources from um, your three hospital systems, as well as the medical examiner's office, as well as just data sets that are available from like Center, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, um, publicly available data. So this slide, we're talking about what um, trends were improving in Delaware County. Now, I don't want to, I want to be clear, this doesn't mean that everything's great in these um, areas. In fact, in some of these areas, um, Delaware County might be lagging behind some of your neighboring counties. But the fact is that this is where when we looked over time, there was an improvement in these um, indicator areas. So infant mortality rate, um, receipt of first trimester prenatal care, violent crime offenses, self-reported poor mental health, and binge drinking. So again, these were ones that over time have seen an improvement, but there is still work to do in these areas. On the reverse side, we looked at areas where we saw trends that were um, worsening in Delaware County. Um, and this is low birth weight babies, asthma, cardiovascular disease, depression, suicide, chlamydia, gonorrhea, drug-induced as well as firearm-related deaths, um, and prevalence of adults reporting fair or poor health. And again, I want to just reiterate that these data were all from pre-COVID. Um, so again, as we enter um, and go forward, um, that might have an impact on some of these data. Um, so I, we also, as I said, we wanted to do an analysis of what was similar um, from 2010 to what we were now seeing in 2020. And for the most part, we found there was a lot of overlap and consistency. Um, and the first one that I think is really important and also is an indicator of all of you being here today is that we found that the participants in our study were very committed to improving health and particularly health equity in Delaware County, which, um, so again, there was a real great group of enthusiasm, support and concern about the health in Delaware County. Um, additionally, the input emphasized many of the following points that, the, again, the need for coordination and communication around health and public health. Um, as I mentioned before, concern about the environment and the related health impacts. Um, pretty much across the board, again, this was pre-COVID, most of our participants um, noted that there was a lack of interaction with the Pennsylvania State Department of Health. Um, they talked about challenges with transportation, access to mental health services, access to care in general, um, and again, having services that might be available in only part of the county, but not in um, some of the um, parts that had more vulnerable populations. Um, and there was also a general belief across both studies in 2010 and 2020 that the, a health, having a county health department would provide opportunity to have um, access to additional federal and state resources for public health. So next we get to what our recommendations were for our study. And again, we framed our recommendations once the new county council was in place and it was clear that there was a strong interest in a 
Delaware County Health Department. And we um, frame these around the role that that health department might have being a voice for public health, as well as a local entity that would actually be responsible and accountable for public health in Delaware County. So we had three recommendations. The first one was monitoring and evaluation, which is focused on the data piece that it should be regularly made available. Um, and in addition to being available, it needed to be used to direct actions to protect and promote health and advance health equity. And as I mentioned before, it was also reiterated that this data needed to be not only at the county level, but also broken down so you all could see things by neighborhood levels and um, areas in the county to, again, target health disparities um, and other issues that might be popping up in certain geographic locations or population or specific to certain populations. Our second recommendation is our C recommendation, coordination, communication, and collaboration. And again, this would be the role of the local health department to be a centralized entity to coordinate and communicate with um, activities across the county with different agencies, as well as different services available at the state. Um, and again, focusing specifically on some of the underserved and more vulnerable populations. Um, and this would be an, op an opportunity to then build also on the work the many good work that's already happening in the county, but being able to build on this um, and to develop some collaborative and coordinated approaches. Um, and then lastly, and but also extremely important is again, um, a place to coordinate the evaluation of these activities and look at them holistically to make sure that um, the, it's a cohesive set of activities and that people aren't um, duplicating efforts. So again, that there'd be a leverage and, and best practices here across the county. And then our third um, recommendation, accountability, resources, and reporting. So again, this is the piece of, yes, we need a voice at the table, but we also need a voice for accountability and responsibility for public health. Um, and and um, making sure that public health remains a priority. Again, in the um, COVID situation, of course, public health is on everyone's minds, but after that passes, public health still needs to be important and be a priority for the county. So this includes creating a vision and leadership um, with having some built-in mechanisms to um, report what's going on and have an accountability and um, oversight role. Support training in public health skills to assure that whoever you have in that health department has the capacity and the tools they need to respond to the needs and, um, and find available resources. Um, and again, the ability to develop and track and report out on um, the health status of the county, as well as individual at the individual neighborhood level. Um, so I want to thank you all again for the opportunity to share. We are happy to take questions in the Q&A period. Um, and as I mentioned in the handout section is the executive summary of our report. And we encourage you all to look at that. Um, and thank you again for the opportunity to be here today. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, being on today. My name is Rosemary Holt, and I am the health policy consultant for Delaware County. Um, I'm just going to be reviewing some things with you today, and just some good reminders from Beth's presentation about the, the core things that a health department really can do for Delaware County will, um, I think, be seen through some of the um, instances that we've experienced in COVID-19. And the next slide. So in COVID-19, um, Chester County Health Department, um, as I took over, responsibility for a COVID-19 response. Um, otherwise, the Pennsylvania Department of Health was responsible for um, all the public health in the county. Um, because of the size of our county and um, the impact that COVID-19 was having um, primarily at that time at the Southeast region, um, Chester County Health Department um, volunteered to be the COVID-19 response um, health department and not um, just take over those responsibilities. They were not taking over other responsibilities such as TB testing or other things traditionally done by um, the health department. But really, this was a large lift for them to do. And we are grateful that they um, took that on and that council was able to um, help arrange that. Next slide, please. 
So um, one of the things that we encountered early on was the um, a lot of pressure points in our response. Um, the lack of testing kits, the lack of personal protective equipment for um, first responders and healthcare workers. Um, there was a lack of ventilators in the region, um, and then a lack of coordinated federal response. All of these made our initial public health interventions in responding to um, COVID-19 um, challenging at best. Um, we were able to overcome a lot of these with working with Chester County Health Department's coordination and coordination with the Pennsylvania Department of Health and Pima. Um, but many, one of the things that are still um, a concern going into, um, which we can still consider this the first phase of COVID, um, is still concerns over testing kits as pressures have come across from other parts of the United States. And um, the lack of personal protective equipment is, again, possibly being in short supply. So these are things that can come back again, but they are definitely something we are working on to make sure um, we can respond effectively in a next wave of COVID. And next slide, please. So um, Chester County Health Department's um, COVID response to Delaware County, as Dr. Taylor said at the beginning, had um, many aspects. So first, um, they're in charge of our case investigation and contact tracing. Um, this is a critical piece in the COVID-19 response. And it's something you probably have heard a lot about, uh, particularly around contact tracing, um, as people have become more aware of um, public health interventions um, that we do for this type of infectious disease spread. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but I also wanna talk about COVID-19 testing and support. Um, so Chester County has supported us in this and we have been um, doing our own testing site in Delaware County. Um, it's a mobile unit that will continue to um, provide testing to residents of Delaware County three days a week. Um, and it's been very effective, and I think we're almost up to 1,500 tests done over the last several weeks. Um, it, we think this is important to be servicing the neighborhoods that have been underserved in testing, and we want to make sure that those, particularly our essential health workers, essential workers in grocery stores and other areas of our economy, have access to testing um, that is accessible to them. The data collection analysis is really key as well, um, particularly for understanding what's happening today and what happens you know, in the past month. I'm looking at trends and analyzing them to see where, how we're responding. Is there pressure points? Is there um, other areas that we should be focusing on? Is there outbreaks in areas that, such as the long-term care facilities that we really need to um, keep a closer eye on? All that data is really critical um, and Chester County has done a fabulous job in collecting data, analyzing it and um, putting it out to the community for their information. Um, and that leads to public health and communication. And Chester County was able to provide a um, public health um, call-in center, um, which is still in operation. And that has really um, been critical for people who have questions that they can talk to somebody immediately. Um, it also has a 24-hour number if there was an emergency, and it really um, helps to coordinate um, the immediate needs of uh, this type of COVID-19 response. Supporting guidance for long-term care in hospitals um, continues on and was essential at the very beginning of COVID when those particular um, areas were having a lot of um, difficulties responding to COVID just from the sheer volume of people. Um, being impacted. So with the support of the Pennsylvania Department of Health, um, we have been able to work with um, the long-term care facilities and the hospitals. Um, we had weekly calls with them in the beginning and we worked really diligently to make sure that they had everything they needed, including personal protective equipment, um, any training that they needed for staff and really working through them when the cases um, arose in their facilities and if they needed um, help addressing them. Support and guidance for first responders and healthcare workers, you know, they were on the front line and still are in this response. So making sure that they had access to um, testing, that they had access to um, understanding how to probably use PPE, um, make it, particularly in COVID, answering their questions and um, responding if someone did be, have a positive case and what they would do in their particular jobs. So, you know, that 
in it itself was a, a large lift for Chester County Health Department covering over 1 million people in this COVID-19 response, but they again have done an excellent job in supporting our both counties. Um, each one of these areas is a major undertaking and in any normal outbreak in a pandemic and merging two counties response is really um, quite challenging. For the sake of limited time today though, that I'm gonna just use the case investigation and data collection analysis um, to give you a more detailed idea of what a health department's response would be. And hopefully one day um, Delaware County would be prepared to um, do its own response. So I'm gonna move into the next slide, which is our um, just giving you an overview of what this um, case investigation and contact tracing does. So um, it's key to really preventing community spread. Uh, as we investigate a case, we need to understand what um, the, who the person has interacted in, making sure that they know they have been exposed, um, working through that with the individual, finding out you know who they've been exposed to in the last um, you know time period since they've developed symptoms, and then helping them um, you know contact the other people that may have been exposed, working with those people to find out who they've been exposed to and just really trying to contain this to um, make sure that we don't have wider community spread. Um, it's a time consuming endeavor. And, you know, we, um, you know, a lot of times it's having conversations with people and really taking the time um, to work through that with them and make them feel comfortable and safe in, um, you know, providing us information. With that, though, we have encountered some people that are maybe reluctant um, to speak with us. So we're really hoping that people understand that the contact tracing and case investigation is really to um, help them and their families and those who've been exposed, you know, really get the care and um, services that they need and to protect the broader community. So um, utilizing the Pennsylvania Department of Health SARE alert system, um, Chester County is also um, using this for contact tracing. And SARE alert is like a standard space open source tool that um, automates the process of public health monitoring and reporting of individuals exposed to or infected with COVID-19. And um, it's really been developed with public health experts. It's another tool for us to use in contact tracing and really helps um, you know, push out messages and um, track people that are in quarantine or isolation. So um, it has been an effective tool and we continue to um, be using it through this COVID-19 response. Um, the other part of um, contact tracing case investigation is really um, provide information and in, in, on sources of the outbreak. So one of the things that, you know, collectively we may find out perhaps that there was a particular, um, you know, particularly now because of the beaches, people had traveled to a certain area. Um, are we seeing hot spots in those areas or is the source of the, and um, this particular case, maybe there is a connection to say, um, another type of event, such as maybe a wedding or a church service. Um, so something where people could have been in close contact um, for more than 15 minutes um, and less than six foot apart. So those types of things we have to um, kind of really distill from each of the cases to really have a better understanding of um, how it's spreading in the community. Um, and then we're ensure the individuals who test positive know what they are supposed to do. So how long, if you test positive, how long are you in isolation? Um, if you are a close contact to somebody, how long do you have to remain in quarantine? Um, you know, answering those types of questions, helping them um, access resources, um, and, you know, and answering anything that they have about the disease and then helping, you know, if they need connections to healthcare providers, those types of things are um, also handled by the case investigators. All right. I'm going to go on to data now. So the next slide. And so as we mentioned earlier, it's really critical that data is um, collected and analyzed and communicated. And that's really essential in a public health response such as um, a COVID-19. So as you look um, here, you can see this is a snapshot of the Chester County Health Department's um, website in their maps and data section. So you can anyone can access this. And it breaks down Delaware County by municipalities. And we also break down data um, in a 
variety of ways. Um, in fact, as of tomorrow, we're going to be updating the system to also break it down by school districts, which was a request by the school um, districts themselves. And so we're going to be looking at, you know, um, positivity rates. Um, we're looking at um, incident rates. We're looking at a number of other factors that may play a role, including um, the governor's four fa um, prime factors in remain helping us to remain in the phase of green. Um, and so all of that data is available. Um, the thing with COVID is that um, we've had wild swings in um, our, our case positivity rates. And so when you're looking at that, um, I caution people to really look over um, two week trends, you know, looking at this day to day or even looking at it a week, um, sometimes it's not picking up um, the delays that we've seen in testing, such for example, many of the, um, because of the increased cases and um, outbreaks in Southern states, many of the labs have been um, falling behind. And so sometimes the lab results are seven to day, 10 days behind. And so what we're seeing is um, it, if we look at it over the two weeks, it paints a, a much more um, holistic picture of where we're at right now. Um, we are working, you know, again um, on more data to help the schools and other businesses assess um, their opening at this time and to be open in a safe and healthy manner. Um, so as we're working through this all together, I know that it's been a frustrating time. Um, I think people almost watch some of this data hourly, you know, looking for that break where we can finally, you know, um, resume some normalcy in our lives. And so, but unfortunately right now, what we're seeing is that this is not stable. Um, you know, we only went into green um, at the end of um, June, beginning of July, and we are still um, assessing and looking at um, the stability of um, what we're seeing in the positive cases. And we've had quite the work roller coaster. Um, it wasn't that long ago that Delaware County was said to have the highest um, case um, numbers in the state. And now, you know, we're back to a much more uh, normal zone. However, that had that fluctuation changes daily. And again, we really need to look at it, um, you know, in the two week to four week time period to really know if it's a, a true decrease, decreasing trend, or, um, you know, just a, a change in the leveling off of um, COVID in our region. All right, I'm going to go to the next slide. And just a reminder that we have um, a lot of information, both on the Chester County Health Department website and Delaware County's website. Um, there's a lot of resources available to the community, um, not just about COVID, but there's food assistance, um, information on the testing sites, information on child care centers, and other resources for the community. And we also um, have been able to translate into um, several different languages. So I really encourage you to um, access those information um, and pass it on to your friends. Next slide. So finally, I just want to remind everyone that, as I said, the Chester County website is um, available for Delaware County residents and we have specific um, data and maps, but then we also have additional information for businesses, long-term care facilities, um, employers, employees, um, schools, child care centers, um, and lots of other things, questions, um, you know, frequently asked questions for about testing and other um, things that people have been concerned about for COVID-19. So again, I really encourage you, if you have those types of questions, look at their website first. Um, again, you're always welcome to call the 610-344-6225 number. And if there's something that we can help you, um, or if there's a, um, if you're worried, if you've tested positive and haven't heard from anybody, that's the number you call. Okay. And that's all I have today. Um, I'm sure there'll be lots of questions and I'm going to pass it off, I think, to Grace. Great. Thank you, Rosemary. And it's such a pleasure to be here with everyone today. And um, I must say, it's also quite a privilege to be working with such an amazingly dedicated group of people to establish the County Health Department. So I wanted to start off by um, introducing you, if you will, um, to the members of the Public Health Steering Committee. Uh, next slide, please. Um, you will see here a list of the um, individuals who were appointed by the County Council in May 
to serve as the Public Health Steering Committee, and they are charged with developing a set of recommendations on um, programs and budget for the health department. You can see here on the list that Dr. Taylor is the chair, and two of the panelists, uh, Francis Sheehan and also Rosemary Halt, are also serving on the committee. They are thankfully not beginning from scratch. <laughs> um, Dr. Taylor mentioned at the beginning that uh, the new council established working groups back in November and the transition working group on public health developed some recommendations to assist with this effort, including um, pulling together some health priorities as well as other kinds of recommendations. Um, they are also, the public health steering committee is also building on the momentum from work on a health department that's been done for quite a while by the Foundation for Delaware County and the League of Women Voters and also the Hopkins Study. So they have um, a lot of great material to consider as they move forward with their work. I also want to point out that a lot of these folks are coming from organizations that are directly involved one way or another with a pandemic res response. And so I just want to express kudos to everyone for dedicating time and effort to serve on this committee at this particular point in time. Um, let's go ahead um, to the next slide and let's talk about the broad vision for um, the County Health Department that the steering committee has. Now they're in their beginning stages of work, the very beginning stages, and they've all, what they've started with is learning about um, a, the national framework for a modern public health department. They are very committed to making sure that the health department that they recommend is one that reflects the needs of health, public health in the 21st century. And you will also see as I start talking that I'm going to be essentially repeating the, uh, the concepts and the recommendations that Dr. Resnick shared from the Johns Hopkins study. Um, so let's start by talking about the focus on the foundations of public health. I think it's helpful, uh, of community health, I think it's helpful to think of the community like a building. It depends on a strong and stable foundation so things like quality education, safe and affordable housing, work opportunities, access to quality care, all of these um, provide the foundation for positive health outcomes for everyone in the community. The mission of public health is to build thriving communities. So the focus of the public health department is on all these foundations of public health. Uh, next on here, you can see um, a, a piece about data. And when it comes to data, think about public health experts. Um, and I'm sorry, let's go back. Um, let's think about public health experts as diagnosing the health of each community. And they do that by listening to people who live there, and then they use data, evidence, and research to offer solutions. This is like GPS navigation, if you will, just as GPS helps you visualize and navigate complex terrain. Public health experts draw on a wealth of data to help chart out the best routes for where their community wants to go. And as Dr. Resnick described, it's really important to have a lot of very local data. And there are data sets that are out there already um, and need to be analyzed. And there are other data where it's a matter of doing very much what the Hopkins team did, talking to the community and doing focus groups and interviews and getting that kind of data. But as an example of the need for um, very local data, in Delaware County, there's almost a 20 year gap between average life expectancies, the low and the high of average life expectancies. The low is 66.9 years and the high is 86.2 years. So it's important to understand 
where those communities are. And that's done um, by census tract. Um, so a really good example of very, very um, local data. Another very important role of the health department is to help organizations work together. In talking about the foundations of community health, you heard about many different aspects of a community. And to, so to improve the health of the community, different organizations need to work together, like schools and businesses, government agencies like planning and transportation, and more. The foundations of um, public health um, involve all of these organizations and involving them, regardless of whether or not they understand how they impact health. So public health brings them all together to make decisions, develop programs, shape public policy, bring resources into the community and take action. And that's a really important piece um, to talk about is bringing resources into the community. Public health's responsibility is not just to try to get grants for the department, their work is to help bring resources in to benefit any effort that will have an impact on health. And as we know from foundations of community health, there are a lot of them. So the last five points on here that you see um, are the core services of public health. And um, in the national model, these are all considered core um, and they also acknowledge that there could be things specific to any community that have not shown up on this core list. So a good example in Delaware County is the, the concern around the, um, the rates of uh, opioid use and addiction and also mental health is another good example. Um, when we look at some of these other core services, clearly COVID-19 is a great example of communicable diseases and what it takes to control them is described by, um, by Rosemary. Um, and also this would refer to um, sexually transmitted infections like, uh, and which would include gonorrhea and chlamydia, which are on the rise, unfortunately, in the county. Promoting healthy lifestyles um, refers to um, basically uh, to every healthy thing that we know we're supposed to do. The top three um, causes of death in Delaware County for the entire population reflect the same as those in the nation. They are heart disease, cancer, and stroke. And so promoting healthy lifestyles means addressing things like nutrition and diet, physical activity, tobacco use. It also involves violence and injury prevention. And the number Four cause of death among the black population in Delaware County is assault or homicide. And I will also point out that this is um, in contrast, stark contrast to the white population where that is the 20th cause of death. So again, very important to understand both exactly where um, things are happening in the community as well as taking a very um, individual approach and working with other sectors, in this case, criminal justice, as an example to address these things. Supporting the health of mom and babies is another critical core service. There are so many wonderful organizations in Delaware County doing this very important work. And yet, unfortunately, um, there continue to be problems with uh, worsening problems with the low birth weight babies as well as um, premature births, as Dr. Resnick said. And the other thing to point out is, despite the improvements in infant mortality and in first semester prenatal care, there is a significant disparity between um, black and white babies when it comes to infant mortality. That black babies die at a rate three times higher than that of white babies. Maintaining healthy environments refers to clean air, pure water, safe food, green space, walkable places, those kinds of things in the environment. And connecting people with high quality health care. Please note that it does not say providing quality health care. A lot of people 
um, have a misconception that public health is about publicly funded health care. And it can be. It can be. But when it comes to county public health departments, that is not a core responsibility. The provision is not. But connecting people with bringing in resources to have it provided, absolutely an important part of that. And there are a couple of things that don't show up here. All of these, um, these core services need to be supported by specific competencies. For example, emergency response, communications, health equity, and partnership development. So these are other skills that health, public health professionals in the community need to be as effective as they can be in fulfilling their charge. And then finally, I would also mention that great work is being done in Delaware County already um, to address all of these core services. Um, and I, I won't mention any of them for fear of um, forgetting anybody <laughs> or not, I, I don't have time basically to mention all of them. So the work of the health department is not to take the place of any of those. Rather, it's to work with them together and to coordinate efforts for, uh, to make the county as health, healthy as possible. So in my final slide then, let's talk really quickly about, um, about the uh, steering committee and its next steps. So the first, the next step that they are gonna take is to study the data um, provided in the, the Hopkins study, as well as the study done by the transition committee. And after that, if we could go back to that slide, um, they'll be creating a strategic plan in September. And this is when where they will develop at least the initial um, uh, mission, vision, and values for the health department, as well as priority um, health um, problems to address. Um, also make sure that they, they are communicating and have a plan to communicate with strategic partners and otherwise provide strategic directions for developing and launching the health department in its first years. Um, first year or two. <laughs> They'll also be developing very specific program plans um, as well as the budget and the staffing plan and any policies to go along with that. After that, they will be vetting the draft plans both with their, uh, their partners, so the important public health partners in each of the areas that are served and that, that touch on the core services, as well as providing an opportunity for community input. Again, it's very important that the, the health department listen to the community. And then finally, they'll be ready to submit their recommendations to the county council. And as uh, Dr. Taylor said at the outset, then the step after that will be to establish the Board of Health. All right, um, I will go ahead and turn it uh, over to the next speaker. Hello, everyone. Um, I believe this is the time where everybody is coming back on and we are going to open it up for our question and answer session. Thank you all for your presentations. It was very informative. Thank you. Go ahead, Monica. Sandy, I think the floor is yours. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandra Clark. I'm the Vice President for News and Civic Dialogue mm -hmm. at WHYY. And uh, we are so pleased to be here today to be able to uh, engage in a conversation with our communities and also connect you all. Boy, in a time when um, it's, it's so difficult for us to connect. Um, months ago when uh, the Foundation uh, uh, for Delaware County came to us and asked us to work with them uh, on this conversation. None of us could have anticipated uh, the pandemic, and we knew that this was gonna be an important conversation and never more uh, than now. So we look forward to uh, a converse, uh, engaging conversation. I see a lot of questions are coming in. We received before the webinar 40 questions um, already, and so I will be rolling those questions through uh, to our panelists. Uh, and we want to thank all of you uh, for participating in this conversation. Uh, we know that this is of you know high interest to many people in the county. So I, I guess I'm going to just start with a really 
obvious question is that given, given um, the many needs and many things that public uh, health departments serve, why has it taken so long for Delaware County to have a uh, public health department? Did I just throw out a, a uh, yeah. No, I, I <laughs> take that Who one. wants to take that one? I've been working on it for uh, about 15 years. <laughs> Um, it, there's a lot of factors in um, mm -hmm. the, why Delaware County doesn't have a health department right now, one of which is, um, you know, perception. A lot of people perceive that, you know, we actually act, a lot of people believed in, including many doctors, that we actually had a health department. Mm -hmm. And so for a long time, people didn't even understand that we didn't until mm -hmm. you actually needed a service. Um, or something arose that um, the county wasn't able to respond. And there's been lots of those instances over the time period. And then, you know, as unfortunately, as we've seen nowadays, things get politicized. And the view was that if you were a Republican, you are against public health. And if you're a Democrat, you're for it. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but yeah. that's some of the perception. And um, and I think there was a lot of other factors that, and, you know, it, it really does take a community movement and um, mm -hmm. I applaud, um, you know, Dr. Taylor and, um, you know, the other council members for taking this on. Um, they ran on part of, you know, getting a public health department and people, um, you know, responded to that. And I think, you know, a lot of factors changed in the county as, you know, um, over time and, you know, a lot of the risk factors that, you um, Dr. Resnick and, and her team um, establishes has been longstanding, but they are, we aren't seeing them get better. And I think people are wondering why. And I, so, it, um, and other groups worked really along, you know, League of Women Voters and other um, groups in the county have been touting this issue for a long time. Um, so I just want to call out Dr. Plotkin, who in 1969 established the first study of public health in Delaware County to try and get a health department and he recently passed. And I just remember him because he was a pediatrician in the county and really cared. And there's, so there's been a lot of movement. It just took, um, I think all the stars aligning. Yes. All the forces have to come together, philanthropy, government, mm -hmm. the community, and unfortunately right now a crisis. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, uh, Dr. Taylor, I know that you have said before that you anticipate feedback, uh, uh, pushback, uh, and uh, how have you responded to that? Because even with all of these forces, we know that there's still, you know, it's not a done deal, and you're still out there talking to the, the community. So, so how do you respond to the pushback? Well, actually, I think because of the situation we're in right now with the pandemic, we haven't had as much pushback as we were originally anticipating prior to that. Um, and I think a lot of the pushback is just people not understanding things about the financial costs, those type of um, those type of situations. And one of the things we've been trying to do is trying to be as diligent as possible and take every step and make sure we keep the public informed as we take those steps. So when we hired a strategic planner, we made sure the public understood. You know, we are we've been talking about the economic impact study. We've been talking about this needs analysis. And so all of these pieces, we're trying to keep the public as informed as possible throughout the process so that they have the answers that they need in order to support it. And we're trying to make sure we're communicating and getting as much public input as possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you know, in terms of uh, the engagement of the public, I know you you touched upon that. Uh, you all touched upon that. But can you can you. Tell how involved the public has been and in what means you were able to reach out to the public. I mean, you have a very diverse county, uh, economically, ethnically, racially. Uh, so so how, how was the, the, the public involved or communities involved uh, in, the, in the research? So I can answer for the Hopkins study and then I don't know if Dr. Taylor or Grace wanna take on the, the um, transition teams and all of the other work you all are continuing. But in the Hopkins study, we had um, the um, online survey, which also was offered in hard copy as well. We partnered with the library system and the senior centers um, to have it available um, both electronically and also in hard copies. And as I think I mentioned, we had um, almost 1800 responses. In our full report, there is a map for where um, the surveys came from um, by zip code. Um, and it, we, this, the majority of responses were from um, people in the center of the county and the more wealthy tended to be more white um, residents. That was the majority of respondents. 
um, and that's outlined fully in our report. We did have four different focus groups that were, um, three were open to the public. One was for um, people that were already involved in um, public health professionals in the county. Um, and then we had the um, convening meeting with the, um, we partnered with the Multicultural um, Family Center for a Palava Hut convening, convening meeting in Upper Darby. Upper Darby. Um, and then the 23 interviews that we had were with um, uh, stakeholder, various stakeholders that were recommended to us by people that were working in public health in the county. And then as we went through each interview, asking people for other suggestions. Um, mm -hmm. So that was our outreach efforts for the study. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, Dr. Taylor wants to add more about the transition teams. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then for the transition teams, uh, one of the things we did as a council prior to being sworn in was we put together transition teams, as I mentioned earlier. And for those, we actually solicited volunteers from the community, from anywhere and everywhere in Delaware County. And we purposely tried to get a broad spectrum on each transition team. And we definitely had a, a large group that was very engaged and from all over the county in mm -hmm. our transition team that was focused on public health. Mm -hmm. And then I guess going forward, one of the things that we've been looking at is uh, with Grace is we have a communications plan and are planning out our, our meetings with the mm -hmm. community members and specific community groups all around the county to try and make sure everybody's engaged. We take input from them as the steering committee puts mm -hmm. together that strategic plan for how our health department should work. Great. Thank you. I, I wanted to uh, ask Palani and Aruna. Um, you know, the, so the next step is data, right? The, the first step was data. Um, you know, given that, um, uh, you know, this was done pre-pandemic, again, no one could anticipate that. Um, how confident are you all in the data uh, that you have now? And are there any areas that you feel you need to revisit uh, given the pandemic? Thank you for that question. I think there's no question that when you're really trying to um, examine the views of a community, a major change like this has really opened, I think, all of our eyes to public health in a way that it hadn't before. And, you know, to be honest, there are both positives and negatives, right? That in some ways, it's wonderful that we are now very much aware of what a communicable disease can do to a population and what that means and what an optimal response could be in terms of really aligning stakeholders and having us work together. On the other hand, unfortunately, it does introduce a certain amount of tunnel vision mm. in that in many places, and this is not just Delaware County, a lot of the longstanding issues, the challenges that communities have fo faced have almost been forgotten. And so, you know, as much as we were uh, a little bit thrown, you know, knowing that our study was sort of transitioning a pre-pandemic and a post-pandemic time, in a lot of ways, we really felt it was a strength that so much of our data collection happened in the quote unquote normal period. Mm -hmm. When we really think about the broad, mm -hmm. A uh, breadth of of challenges and the different kinds of of interests and focus and everything else that people have. And I applaud Grace in her presentation and really mm -hmm. focusing on not only specific areas of health challenges, but the disparities and all of the um, within Delaware County challenges that you can see. And that's where a health department can play such a vital role in being able to break down not just what does a county look like overall, but also what are those places within the county and what are different people facing within a county. Mm -hmm. So I think that while, um, you know, we would love to leverage the momentum that the pandemic has given us in terms of public health being mm -hmm. on the front of people's priorities and minds, and obviously the funding will take it. Um, but on the other hand, I think that uh, Grace's broader outlook is to be applauded. And I hope that continues as we, as you all really think about the best way to um, put together the health department. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the disparities that existed before were laid bare, but they were always there and they've been there a long time. Right. Alana, so, do you have anything to add to that? No, I, th no, I think Aruna covered it very well. Okay, great. So, well, Sandra, could I just add one thing? Because I yeah, want to. Please, please. I think that um, these are some great points. And when we were doing the focus group, again, this was before the pandemic, um, I kept mentioning, you know, that having a health department is great. Anybody can open a building and put a sign on it, but what you put in that health department is the super important thing. And I think as Aruna um, was complimenting Grace, and I think she's she's right, 
is you all don't want to have a COVID health department. You want to have mm -hmm. a health department that can give you a thriving community that can handle the next outbreak, but as well as all of these other concerns. So as Aruna said, I actually think our study gives you, grounds you in a way that if we had done it this year, it would have been communicable disease, communicable disease. Um, and as we are all saying, these issues are um, important and um, COVID makes them all amplified but that you can't forget all of these other other pieces. So um, I, I encourage you, um, it doesn't matter that we did it, but like to look at our study as a good foundation for, and it's Grace is already sending you on your way um, in thinking broadly about what public health is. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some questions uh, about whether this uh, these decks, this information is gonna be publicly available. Um, it, where, where can residents get a copy of uh, this, this information or the study? It's actually in the um, it's in the uh, handout I, right there. If people okay, it's been posted. Top, right, it's been posted, and the Foundation Wonderful. for Delaware County has it on our website as well. Yes, and so does the county. So the county has it on the page on our, our web page. Also. Okay, can, can you repeat those uh, websites where uh, people can access that? So the county's web page is delcopa.gov. Okay, and, and the foundation is delcofoundation.org. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Francis, I wanted to ask you a question because, you know, I know that you all, like so many of us, uh, all, almost all of us have had to pivot and really think about, you know, mm -hmm. how you serve the needs of, uh, of, of, you know, people who are in very dire situations. And I know you all created a COVID fund, um, but what are, what are you seeing and, and hearing uh, in Delaware County, um, you know, in terms of the situations that people are living in and what their needs are? I think that um, well, a couple of things, I think people, the unemployment issue and people are really struggling, food security issues are very, very significant. I don't think they're going to get any better. Uh, I think that really needs to be addressed, the whole emergency food system in the county. But I also, I, I think we've been struck at the Foundation for Delaware County, how many nonprofits have come forward that are really trying to fill the gap. Um, they're really trying to figure out how to help with that issue. Um, and yet are really struggling, you know, underfunded, under-resourced. Um, I think that um, one of the values of having a public health department will be bringing some of these organizations together, identifying and investing in some of the nonprofits that could really help to rise, the, rise to the challenge so that next time we do a study, we're able to really tap into the minority communities and and find the you know get good feedback so we have a more a richer response and and a, do a better job of identifying the needs. I think Hopkins did a phenomenal job. The study's excellent, mm -hmm. but I think if we actually had our own health department, we'd really be tapped into all those communities. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, well, one of the things that was highlighted uh, in the study was about the need for cultural competency. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, obviously that, that that's a, that's a very important need in terms of reaching communities and 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 really even just talking about the public health needs and services. But um, what what does cultural competency look like in the public health world? Grace, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure, I'd be happy to. I think the very uh, the very first thing I would say about cultural competency is turning to people with lived experience when it comes to addressing um, specific health issues that are relevant to different populations. Um, and that means, and when, it, um, when you think about community organizing, it also means really lifting up the, the voices and the organizations that represent populations of particular concern. Cultural competency also means that the staff of the health department will reflect the population that they serve. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, when I look at the website for COVID resources, it is wonderful to see um, all of the information available in so many different languages. And I think that is an important piece of this. And the other piece is to take it a step further and make sure that the work is being done by and informed by people from different cultures in the county. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I see you have information in multiple languages, which is, is, is really important. But, you know, those credible voices within the community uh, really matter. Uh, we, we're doing a, a, a great amount of work at WHYY over the last several years on that very thing, because um, representation matters. Uh, I wanted to ask a question um, about, you know, money, right? Uh, nothing comes for free. <laughs> and uh, several questions we've had are really about, you know, is this going to be a burden on the taxpayers? Is there an expectation that the state will contribute, federal government will contribute? Do we have any sense of that yet? Yes. So one of the things that I we have just actually last night in our public meeting, we have approved as a council to go out for proposals, an RFP for an economic impact study. And so that study will bring back the information to council where we will have information on what the budget would look like, how much it would cost for a uh, health department for a county our size, and then how much funding we would be getting from the state and the federal government okay. and kind of putting that all together so that we can understand the full economic impact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how long do you think that study is going to take? I'm sure that's a top of mind question for, for many residents of the county. Well, we're, we're hoping that it will be done by mm -hmm. mid-fall, probably, mm -hmm. somewhere around there, so that we have that information along with the strategic plan. And our steering committee also has that information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask a question uh, about trust in information, uh, because it, it, you know in our journalism world, we are managing misinformation as much as we're managing information, right? Uh, and if there's ever a time when uh, our communities need vital information, it, it's now. Uh, is there a, a trust issue in, in public health communication uh, of, of really connecting with communities and, and, and actually now starting a whole new department of, of convincing people of the need for that? I might just comment on that, but I'll leave it up to everybody else because I'm sure <laughs> has comments on this. Yeah. But um, around one of the things that we have seen in COVID is really ensuring that people do have trust. Um, and it's challenging right now because one, there's a lot of misinformation out there and there's a lot of um, fear. And this is something that, you know, people haven't en encountered before. And so, you know, a lot of it is communicating and having, you know, public information widely available. That's why we put everything up on um, our websites. And then, but also trying to reach out to the communities. And um, I think the one thing with our testing sites, our mobile testing sites in Delaware County particularly, is making sure that um, we're accessing the communities that um, feel that they might not have had testing before. Um, there's been a couple testings in the city of Chester, um, and we're hoping to launch one next week um, with a private partner. So I, you know, I think it's really just looking where the needs are and responding, but being, you know, as Grace was saying, it's really um, important that we're meeting people where they're at and responding to their needs. I think Dr. Taylor um, and a lot of the um, county has been really working, for example, um, Francis brought up the, the food insecurities. And so we've had many food drives. Um, there has been um, a, a lot of different supports to different communities like the homeless um, groups in Upper Darby. So it's really trying to figure out how, how are we really listening to and finding out. Um, but it's not just the loudest voice. We have to make sure that we're listening to those that don't have mm -hmm. a voice. And I think that's the challenging part for um, everybody now. And then, you know, people are homebound a lot. And so, you know, there's a lot of people that may not be able to connect to services and they're, they're the ones I truly worry about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll just um, add quickly to that, that I think a lot of people don't understand that public health um, is science-based. Mm -hmm. And what public health does is driven by data and evidence-based programs. And I think, the more the public comes to understand that that is the foundation of public health, I hope the more credible in general people will view public health departments. And I'm not saying this specifically about Delaware County, I'm talking about generally <laughs> across the country. Yeah. And, and, and just to add to that, I yeah. think that's actually, again, the case for why we need a local health department because mm -hmm. you're much more likely to, to trust your neighbor or, or you know making sure that the this local organization has trusted 
people on its board, involved in its staff, mm -hmm. that you know, community partners, then you're just in a much better position to be able to make a case for the science that's behind public health. This is such a big global issue, distrust in science, mm -hmm. miscommunication about science and health. And the more we on the local level can be making the case for public health, I think the more effective we're going to be. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we certainly see that in journalism, right? I mean, there's mm -hmm. a national discourse and then at the local level connecting to uh, things that impact people's lives. I mean, there's there's sort of a different feeling about that. Um, I, I, you know, this is also on top of everything else when uh, we're collecting data from, for the census. Uh, uh, do you have any sense of participation um, in the census? And also, um, what's the impact of, of uh, non-participation in the census for the county? Well, I will just say that we're nowhere near where we need to be, particularly in communities like Chester. And we've had a really vigorous complete count committee for the county that, um, you know, great volunteer organizations, the United Way helped us launch a, a census action fund and we deployed over $100,000 to nonprofits in the county to get the word out. But it is a real problem and there's been so much confusion because of course with the COVID lockdown, everything stalled. Mm -hmm. Then people thought they had till October 31st, now they only have till September 30th. Um, we really need more people to be engaged. We need people to filling it out fill it out because it is going to significantly impact funding for a variety of different services at the county level. Yeah. And, and, and it, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Grace. I was just going to say that in addition to funding, right, because funding formulas are mm -hmm. often based on population, there's also a tremendous implication for health statistics. It's one thing to be able to count the numbers of various health conditions. It's quite another to understand the rate at which a health issue is occurring. And this is particularly true when it comes to looking at disparities of health, um, between different populations and health outcomes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, can I ask what, what are the efforts within the county uh, to increase participation? What's happening now? Well, one of the things that Francis had mentioned was that we've actually had a longstanding group that's been working to get the information out through the census and working with kind of those high target areas that we had low participation from mm -hmm. before the, in the previous census, like our Upper Darby and Chester and our Southern, Southeastern portion of the county. And so we've been trying to work really closely with them to mm -hmm. make sure we're trying to get that communication out through the municipalities, through the local organizations, through our multicultural uh, collaboration and trying to get as much as much participation in the process as possible. Okay, great. Um, you know, we talked. You talked a little bit about business earlier, uh, and the impact on small business in particular is, and obviously, so much of this is tied to uh, getting overcoming uh, this COVID crisis that that we're in. Um, how is the business community being engaged in this effort to start a public health department, and uh, and how much are you all working with them right now? So the business sector, if you take a look at the, um, the makeup of the Public Health Steering Committee, you'll see that it is comprised largely of the major players with respect to health in the county right now. And when it, um, the, it um, in, engaging the multiple other sectors that need to be engaged will begin when we start um, two ways, <laughs> one with the communications plan. Uh, reaching out strategically, and then second, as we start to vet the different um, program bundles, because we will be mm -hmm. very intentional about including the um, the appropriate sectors when we do that. Grace, can you name uh, some of the other multiple sectors that you you all still need to engage? Well, sure. I mean, I'll start by saying with business, you know, there are small businesses, and there are also large employers. Um, there are schools. There are a host of nonprofits. Um, there are other government agencies. And so we're looking to include, um, for example, social services, mental health providers, planning, transportation, um, 
organizations dealing with nutrition and food and physical activity, mm -hmm. YMCA, <laughs> United Way. I mean, it can go on and on, but hopefully that gives you a, a good example. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about mental health for a minute and mental health services. Uh, what what exists now and and what change might happen if there is a public health department uh, started next year? So currently our mental health services, there's a combination of mental health services. Some of them come through our county human services division. And then we also have several providers, nonprofit providers that help to support the mental health of the community. And so I would imagine that, you know, in some areas it's interesting because looking at even the collar counties in Philadelphia, everybody does it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. In some areas have separate human services departments, separate health departments, and they collaborate. And in some areas they're combined, they're a health and human services department. Mm -hmm. And so ours has developed as a human services department on its own, and then we'll have a health department, but they are going to be working so closely on all of these mental health issues and looking at them as a whole. Mm -hmm. Um, are you are you able to meet the need now? I mean, I can imagine that mental health is uh, really as much in crisis a crisis area as anything else at this moment. So, how how are those needs being met at the moment? Uh, so currently, yes, and I mean we are meeting a need, but I think that you can always find areas for improvement on mental health supports. And as you could see, some of the issues looking at the study and the trends, we are worsening in some of the areas mm -hmm. of mental health. And so clearly there's more of a need there that can be addressed uh, through a health department along with in collaboration with the, uh, our county human services. And, and uh, Dr. Taylor, what do you attribute being worse in some of those those areas? Is it the availability of resources? It's Is, is it knowing what's available or uh, is it something else? I think it's it's probably knowing it's available. I think mm -hmm. the communications and trying to get that information out mm -hmm. and letting individuals know that it's there. But as looking at the study, I mean, there were areas of depression was worsening in our area. And so just trying to make sure people know that the supports are there through human services is one of the things that we can address now. But then I think the health department, once again, because this was one of the big recommendations from the study was that we need a better way to court of coordination, communication and collaboration mm -hmm. and the health department will help to make sure individuals in the community understand where those resources can be found and how they can get access to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Could I add one thing? Sure. Yeah. So it's actually just been mentioned on the chat, but it was brought up multiple times in the focus groups about, um, the crisis center that was shut down. And again, it could be a perception, but what we were hearing was access to services was a huge issue. Um, so again, I think something that needs to be explored further and, and it could be a coordination um, avail um, lack of uh, communication, or it could be that there really is a, a dearth of services again to, to um, explore that a little further. So, so just to build on what Beth just said, and I wanted to just address one of the questions in the chat as well is around funding is that that's exactly what the role of a public health department is, is to identify, well, what is the need? What are the implications of them having shut down the crisis center? Mm -hmm. Maybe it made sense because there were other services elsewhere that people don't know about. So what is the glit? What's the need? What's, what's the problem that needs to be addressed and who are the right partners to bring together to address the problem? And I, I wanna just mention that if we believe in the need for a local health department, we really need to be advocating for it. Not just advocating for it on the local level, but advocating for it on the state level and on the federal level. Because right now we have flat funding for federal, for, for public health in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to receive funding, it, you know, you have to, in order to draw down state funding for a public health department in your local county, you have to spend a certain amount of county money and that'll mm -hmm. come out in the financial analysis that Dr. Taylor mentioned. But in order for us to, for us to draw down funding in Delaware County, if the funding on the state level is flat, we're taking money from Montgomery County, we're taking money from Philadelphia County, we're taking money from Chester County, from Bucks County. And there will be other counties out in the state that are gonna be thinking about setting up public health departments as well. It's so, there, there are states in the country where every single county 
has its own public health department. Indiana, Colorado, mm -hmm. we, we are one of the only states that has virtually very, very few public health departments. Mm -hmm. So if we really want to beef up the public health infrastructure in Pennsylvania, we need more funding to be able to do that, whether it's federal funding, whether it's state funding. That is really a big, people have got to start advocating for that because it's without that advocacy, mm -hmm. There will be pushback. There will be people who they do not want investment in public health. They don't want to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. And that's, we can see right now, people are people are ill, people are dying, our businesses are suffering, school, it, the school openings are confused, mm -hmm. and we need to be investing in public health in order to address all of those problems. Mm -hmm. And that's going to take citizen advocacy, citizen input. Yeah, I was just about to ask that question, Francis. Is this your call for citizen citizen advocacy as opposed to something else, right? Well, we really believe at the Foundation for Delaware County that if you really wanna have a healthy community, citizens need to be involved. It, nothing can be top down. You really have to have everybody at every level engaged. Mm -hmm. And this is no, this is no, uh, this is no different. Yeah. I wanted to go back to the study for a minute. Um, were there any surprises in there uh, for anyone? And um, you know, it, and did Delaware County, studying Delaware County, how was that different from someplace else? So um, I don't, honestly, there really wasn't any surprises. And again, I think doing the 2010 study, I think what came across clear was that there is a, certainly a core foundation in this county of people that are really dedicated. I think you can see this on this panel. And as Rosemary was involved in our first study, um, you know, that people are, have been working on this for a long time. Um, you know, again, the health status issues, um, again, I don't think there was any surprises, um, you know, in a urban type area where you guys are located outside of Philly, you know, that you would be having a lot of issues. Uh, I think you're similar to other communities in, in those challenges that you're facing. Again, communities that have diverse populations and different incomes have a lot of disparity. So I think what you're seeing in Delaware County is not that different from other places, but that doesn't mean that, you know, and, that, and it's very admirable that you all are um, taking this on and wanting to address it. Um, so um, I don't think there was any any surprises, but I guess um, the, the hope I feel is that, you know, the interest and the support for public health, which I think is obviously fantastic. And, and now this pandemic, um, just making that even more, um, more clear and, and the need for that to be strong. Um, and as you know, you all were talking about, it is obviously going to take hard work and um, finances and um, citizen engagement in, in moving forward. But um, I think you guys are off to a, a really great start. So I'm going to uh, roll through some of the questions in our chat because there are many uh, and then whoever wants to take them can. Uh, was there any analysis of emergency preparedness, not just for COVID, uh, but for any other emergencies like severe storms and chemical or other toxic or, or toxic uh, contamination? So looking at the emergency preparedness, that would be a combination between once we have a health department, there will be an emergency preparedness person within the health department, but they will work really closely with our Department of Emergency Services. Okay. So, so it's in the recommendations yep. or in the analysis. Is that what you so said? That piece, is not, that piece is not in the analysis. That's I just, see. yes. So that's just from looking at how the health department would be structured and some of the pieces that we have to have uh, according to Act 315, which is PA's regulations mm -hmm. in the health department. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I, I, if I could ahead. just say one thing to that, it's um, originally this endeavor began um, partly from 9-11 and the uh, strategic national stockpile and having a pa uh, pandemic preparedness plan, ironically, was one of the uh, first issues that we began this endeavor with. And it's sad that now we're here and we still don't have a health department, but that that was one of the key things of having a medical countermeasures plan and um, being actively to do it. One of the good things is that Delaware County, um, because, partly because of the 2010 study, um, really um, began to implement a medical countermeasures plan. And so that is part of a um, of our response. And so that is a, a strong part of our county. Right. Uh, obviously a lot of questions, uh, both in the advanced questions and now about schools and and mental health issues for parents and, and students alike. 
uh, you know, schools opening soon. Who, who, who kind of gives the best guidance for that in terms of, um, you know, how schools should, should operate? I know that it's kind of, there's a lot of different people trying to figure this out. So I'll just speak for basically um, with the Chester County Health Department um, who have been analyzing and, and looking at our data from day one and continue to do so. Um, we have been looking again at trends and um, working with our um, school districts for several um, months now actually on their plans for reopening. And as we got additional information from the Pennsylvania Department of Health, as well as Pennsylvania Department of Education, um, we have been adjusting our guidance in accordance to their recommendations. Um, it's a very tough situation and we do not feel there's real stability in um, our cases in Delaware County. We've had a lot of fluctuations even in the, over the last um, three weeks from up and down and then making sure that the schools are prepared with staff um, and, and really analyzing their own needs. Um, so all of those factors were part of um, our guidance, as well as numerous other points um, that we, uh, it would take too long to go into, but the, the guidance is available on the Chester County Health Department website. Uh, is there uh, any, any positive signs? I know you did kind of a quick run through on the, where COVID is and testing is now, but uh, any changes in sort of quick result testing and that might give us more information quicker uh, so, for some of these decisions to be made? Yeah, so there is um, a, a variety of tests um, being used right now. There's the PCR test, which everybody has um, cringes when they see the pictures of putting a nasal swab way up your nasal pharyngeal cavity. Um, that's the most um, common and, and at this point we feel the most accurate, but there are rapid tests um, that are being utilized both in our nursing homes and in um, physician offices. Um, and then there are um, additional self swab tests that are being utilized by um, the pharmacies and some people can order them for at home. Um, all of them are important. Um, the tricky part with testing is, and I just don't want to get into the nitty gritty of it, the tricky part with testing is it has to be at the particular time when the person has the highest viral load. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So timing of that, you can get a lot of false um, negative and somebody tests negative one day and tests positive the next day. And that's the difficult part in this. Um, so, you know, working out communication, like we said earlier, communicating with um, not only um, the general public, but um, healthcare professionals about when testing should occur and what's the best test and being available to answer questions about that is what Chester County has been doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we have uh, so many questions still in the chat, so we know there's another conversation coming. I think we all have to sign up for uh, uh, another one of these because there's, there's many questions still to be answered. Uh, I know that you know we, you condensed your your decks into very uh, uh, you know a, a couple of slides. Is there anything that you um, that's really important that you didn't have a chance to uh, share with uh, our community here uh, that you still want to sort of make a note of and put a little pin in right now? Just want to open up that floor for for one last uh, comment from any of you. Okay, we're we're good. Well, I, I want to thank uh, all of those who you know came to this conversation today. As I said, this is uh, uh, the beginning and not the end. We have many more questions to answer. So many fluid situations happening. Uh, WHYY will continue covering this story, of course. And uh, each and every time we have an opportunity to engage with our communities, uh, we come come away with questions uh, that we know we need to answer. We know what's most important to you. And so this is not programming for us, but this is about uh, engaging with our communities, but also connecting you with each other. And so we will continue uh, to keep an eye on many of these questions. We have a transcript and we will also find ways to answer them. Uh, thank you again for the Foundation for Delaware County uh, for partnering with us and to all of our uh, great panelists for your work. Francis, do you wanna close us out? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sandy. And thank you to Joyce Soto and the WHYY team for all their technical support. And 
Thank you all for engaging in this critical work, whether you responded to the, w to the Johns Hopkins survey or you participated in a focus group or you're just here with us today, you've made a statement that you wanna be part of addressing one of our county's most pressing needs, the need for a public health department. And we hope you'll remain involved, that you'll encourage your family, your friends, your neighbors to become engaged and that you'll consider the foundation for Delaware County as a source of information about how you can be part of helping to move our county forward. You can visit us online at delcofoundation.org or to sign up for our monthly e-newsletter. You can follow us on social media and consider donating either to the foundation to, or to one of the many nonprofits that we're investing in with grant dollars and through our Center for Nonprofit Excellence. Stay tuned. We've only just begun. Thank you again, and please take care.